crochet samplers are done on a single piece of fabric and have cross-stitched motifs, patterns, letters, words, designs, you name it, cross-stitched onto them. We know that cross-stitch is a very old form of art. Uh, one of the earliest examples we have is from 1598, so we know that cross-stitch has been practiced since at least the 16th century. This example is currently in the Victorian Albert Museum. The typical format of cross-stitch samplers that most of us are familiar with are larger squares or rectangles and have a variety of images, sometimes religious motifs, alphabets, and usually the names and ages and the year that the cross-stitch sampler was done and the girl who did it. During the 19th century in Upper Canada, you see a lot of cross-stitch samplers being produced, many of which are done by young girls, some as young as age six or seven. The function of cross stitch is more than just a decorative piece to do. It has a couple of elements that are really important in the development of a young girl's life. First of all, it helps her to hone and develop her needlework skills. Sewing, cross stitch, embroidery were all essential in an upper Canadian household in this time period. But it was also an introduction to formal education, in some sense of the word. Many of these young girls were being exposed to the alphabet and the numbering system by cross-stitching them onto their samplers. So the more they practiced, the better they were able to understand the alphabet and numbers. So with that being said, let's take a closer look at some of the amazing cross-stitch samplers we have in the Hutchison House collection. Mary Greenhow, age 11, 1825. The top of the sampler includes two angels and an apple tree with a snake around it, referencing the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden. These religious motifs tell us that Mary was likely from a Christian upbringing. Moral and religious motifs and sayings were very commonly included in samplers, especially during the first half of the 19th century. The border that Mary uses, a strawberry vine pattern, was one of the most popular during this time. Caroline Emerson, age 9, 1830. During the 1820s and 30s in Upper Canada, sampler styles changed slightly. They became more colorful, with red, green, blue, and pink being the most noticeable among the new thread shades. Compared to the previous example, we can see that Caroline's work seems to be much brighter and bolder. Something else you may notice about this sampler is that there is no sense of three-dimensionality, which is not something that was typically attempted during this time. Rather, the designs are arranged to cover the fabric evenly, not relating to one another logically in terms of space or scale. Eliza Much, 1856. During the 1840s and 50s, it was common to use many colors, so many so that each letter and number was different from its neighbors. By this time, the region was more settled and had a stronger financial basis, so one could afford more expensive and colorfully dyed thread. Scarlet, however, was a luxury item. Eliza's sampler includes several beautiful pops of scarlet red, indicating that her family had the means to buy such a luxurious color. The variety of motifs and figures was also beginning to dwindle around this time. Birds and flowers remained while other figures fell out of fashion. Eliza's is the only sampler of our four examples to stray from the common flower or strawberry border. She chooses instead to go with a more simple zigzag geometric pattern. Ellen Lancaster, age 8, 1863. Ellen's sampler from 1863 seems to incorporate many of the key features of the previous samplers all in one. Again, we see the bold pops of red, indicating the use of more expensive thread. We also see the alphabet and a religious motto. She incorporates a number of different motifs and figures, including the ever-popular flowers, but also some less common shapes, like a teapot and a ship. Throughout the second half of the 19th century, cross-stitch samplers slowly began to decline in popularity until they were no longer something that every young lady had to complete. While similar designs and motifs can be found on samplers across Ontario, even around the world, it's important to realize that each sampler is unique to the young girl who created it. Samplers not only serve as a decorative piece and a reference material for us to have in a collection, but oftentimes they also serve as the only record of a life lived. It's very uncommon that we have artifacts in a collection that directly relate to young girls, specifically ones that they have created themselves. With that being said, we hope you enjoyed today's video, and we hope that you come back next week to take a look at our cross-stitch sampler tutorial, where we show you how to create your own sampler based off of the various designs that you've seen in today's video.